Guys, welcome back. So we have a brand new series for you this week. Um, we've been looking forward to doing this one for a little while uh, and we're going to start off by sort of introducing you to some numbers from uh, some of our Patreon yes. members. So we'll pick one every single week uh, who we're going to specifically look at whatever, you know, whatever issues they're having in their game. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So this week we've got uh, Vince, who's, who's one of our great Patreon members, has sent us in some uh, video footage and also some launch monitor uh, data of his yep. uh, of his driver. He's having some issues with it. He's getting a little bit too much curvature. He's kind of in between drivers, and we're going to identify some of the issues um, that, that we think he's having, and obviously some of the solutions that we think will really help Vince hit his driver much yeah. much straighter. This is the process that our uh, platinum and diamond members can go through with yep. us. So they're mm -hmm. basically, and you've been doing this for months already. For sure. You're getting reports like this, and and you're getting back to them basically with your recommendations. So yep. what we want to do is just highlight that process because I think mm -hmm. it's interesting for other people to see um, other golfers with a certain problem, whether yep. it's a driver or irons, and, and their ball flight is whatever it is, mm -hmm. and what equipment recommendations you are making for them yep. in order to improve their performance. Yeah. And that's basically what the series is going to be about uh, every week. We get, I mean, it is a, such a huge compliment. We must get 150 emails a week that with, with people sending wow. their, uh, their launch monitor numbers to us. Uh, just to our info email, and uh, in all honesty, and it's, it's it's nothing to do with us lacking any effort or, or kind of you know not wanting to see you know you you guys your numbers. We do, we literally physically couldn't. Oh, there's no way you can do it. No. I mean, unless we stopped you know the day to day TXG Operation, operations, yeah. uh, we we just can't you know we can't get to them, which is where you know our Patreon platform allows us to actually have dedicated time to patreon yeah. and 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 you know what that is so um this is this is hopefully going to be even more valuable to to the members on there because we can you know really go in depth with oh them. for sure and yeah. you can see how what other people are experiencing yeah um, and how your recommendations have helped them and maybe exactly. for the people that aren't a member of patreon they can still benefit by watching it just because you get to see someone mm -hmm. that might be kind of like you in delivery yep. and and the issues that they're having and, and see what we recommend definitely definitely okay. so vince uh has mm. some some really good attributes about his golf swing yeah. i mean the video we saw was uh, was was really quite good and you know lots of speed lots of lots of, of good stuff going on hits a bit of a right to left yep. um, drive maybe over curves it from time to time mm -hmm. um, so roughly off the numbers we got from Vince he's about five degrees from the inside he was using a Skytrack to get his yep. numbers so you know Skytrack uh, is is decent for some some ball flight numbers you know it's not obviously going to give you the same uh, quality of, of, of club answers. club delivery. Yep. Um, so we're not getting angle of attack and, and all these other sort of uh, parameters, um, dynamic loft, that sort of thing. But we're able to extract enough from Vince's numbers that we definitely think we can we can see uh, the the root of this problem. Well, you can you can kind of with your knowledge you can sort of I guess reverse engineer that. You know yeah. roughly how he's delivering the club to produce the numbers that he's producing. For sure. Right. Yeah, we, we can definitely. So he's currently using a ten degree Callaway Rogue. That's right. Um, at a Fuji Tour Spec X Flex shaft, so a pretty kind of stout shaft, I guess you would call <clears> it. Yeah, I mean, relatively speaking, and this is kind of part of the the, if you want to call it, sort of no, misinterpretation. I think is probably the, the right way to call it. Mm. These shafts that are supposed to be a certain way, but right. actually are in a different way. So if you look at the 661 Tour Spec, it was. Uh, a spin-off of the original Speeder Evolution series, which was a kind of, you know, nice royal blue color. Right. The the 661 Tour Spec was a kind of dark gray, a uh, little bit of a, a stiffer profile, um, but pretty high in torque. Um, oh, it was okay. yeah, it was 4.2 degrees of torque uh, in the, the 661 Tour Spec, and you know, it, it didn't always perform like the way some of some of the other shafts. Um, you know, that would be designed to kind of flat ball flight. Okay. Uh, would. Gotcha. So definitely Vince is, is kind of, and, and not that it's high spin is his issue, but his lack of face control relative to his rightward path is right. his biggest issue. So the face is getting closed relative to the path too much. Correct. So right. he's, he's suffering a little bit right now with 
uh, with too low launch and spin okay. and too much curvature. So okay. as we, we know, uh, curvature is, is directly correlated to backspin um, through spin axis tilt. Right. So um, right now it, for uh, Vince's average and we, we were able to kind of subtract some of the, there was a couple of misread numbers, but about 162 is the average ball speed yep. that, that yep. Vince was able to get. Um, his club head speed, depending if, if you read it on Trackman or Quad, would either be 110 on Trackman, 112 on Quad. Right. So he's he's got great speed and, and lots sure, of good yeah. stuff. So from a swing perspective, we can see Vince sort of comes a little bit inside in the back swing, gets across the line, steepens the shaft a hair uh, on the way down, but still manages to get the club to come from the inside about five degrees. So right. in order to do that, kind of tilts a little bit uh, as he comes in, mm. in order to try and shallow the swing, which just kind of pushes it out and up. And obviously the, the face is going to rotate a little bit because uh, because he gets that path moving rightward. Okay. So in order to try the face, you know, try, try and get back to the target, um, the, the face kind of almost over corrects. Right. So this head, I guess, to start with, mm -hmm. you take someone that likely is missing with an overdraw or a hook, let's call it, in yep. certain situations. Probably not the best choice for the most part, depending on the golfer. It, it's sort of <clears throat> more or less, it's not a fade bias driver by no, any means. No, definitely not. And, right. and I can kind of see what, what they, were, they would have been going for um, with, with this. Right. Um, I, I can definitely, you know, I can, I can see the direction that, that the fitting would have been going. But to, to your point, Matty, yeah, there's not enough protection against the left side of the fairway gotcha. for, for Vince in this one. I just want to throw this on yeah. just, to, just to kind of give you guys an idea, some of the things that are kind of in my mind. So, you know, I'm throwing this on the, the, the digital scale here, oh, okay. right? 186 yeah, grams. So if we look at, at the weight, the CG being further back, we know that the standard rogue is... is they try to make it a little bit more forgiving. It's quite yep. quite white uh, or sort of long in the body from yep. face, front to back. It it will be quite an easy driver to rotate. Okay, gotcha. um, Being a little bit lighter in head weight as well, it will also be a little bit easier to to, oh, okay. to rotate. So I mean, that, that it basically makes that that aspect worse. It can. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if you if you're quite light down in the down in the, the head weight uh, sort of area down, so from a swing weight perspective, it would be very easy to lose uh, some face control uh, with that. So I would definitely look at head weight as being uh, a bit of a, an issue here. Right. Um, for for Vince, I'd, I'd like to see that up a little bit higher. So a bunch of things lead me towards. I mean, you guys are probably guessing where we're going with this already. Bunch of are leading us to ping. Okay. Okay. And so which model of ping do you think? I mean, I think with? straight away uh, the the two that are in my mind are um, ten degree LS Tech. Okay. Because it has enough of an open sort of face uh, address. Um, so if we like throw that on the scale, Matty, just to, just out of curiosity. So just relatively speaking, so we're. At, we're 10 grams heavier with that one. 196, okay. Yeah, 196. And then my other option that I would have would have to be, would have to be max. Right. Uh, which is even max heavier. Max is up at 200, right. well. So, so, I mean, I'd love to see <coughs> those two heads in action. Um, and, and, you know, specifically, I think max could spin it a little bit higher. Right, stabilizer um, form. Yeah, I mean, you've got kind of two things. You'll probably get a slightly better flight from LS Tech in that mm. it, the face being a little more open will keep the face closer to the path. Okay. Reduce the curvature a little bit. The reduced curvature will actually make the ball flight a mm. little bit higher because it will retain loft a little bit easier. Right. But uh, G400 Max will probably spin it a hair higher, make the curvature a little bit less, potentially can uh, enhance his delivery a little bit through more feel for where the head is. Just um, by having more weight. 14 grams. Yeah, that's a lot. That's almost 10% of the overall uh, head weight we're talking about here. What do you think swing weight wise would the original driver that he's using, what, what do you think that would measure out? It'd be pretty light. D1, okay. most. And this might be more like D4? D4 to D5 would be substantial, yeah, right? quite a lot. Yeah. yeah, quite a lot of difference. Yep. So two, I guess two different ways of accomplishing a similar um, end goal. Mm -hmm. In that with him, I guess the face angle is probably the main culprit. If it wasn't 100%. so closed, that ball flight would look completely different. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Based on where I saw the, uh, the the launch angle at on Vince's numbers as well, it was yep. averaging about 11 degrees, uh, yes. roughly 11.2. Yep. So we're able to to sort of 
uh, extract the, the delivered loft, which is going to be about 14 and a half to 15. Okay. Um, so it's using a 10, 10 degree driver. Using a 10 and a half degree driver, yep. you know, it's, it's, I think you said it's standard setting. Neutral setting. Yeah, neutral yep. setting. So, yep. um, yeah, we, we can see that the, the, the delivered loft is going to be about 14, 15. So I think if we can keep that face a little bit more uh, to the right, mm. a little bit more head weight will really boost his, his uh, I think he'll actually be able to take quite a bit more ball speed from it as well. Interesting. I really do. I Relative think, to his swing speed. I really think there's, there's mm. more in there for him. I actually think probably, to be honest, you'll, you'll pick up a little bit of swing speed uh, from the slightly heavier oh, okay. um, slightly heavier setup as well. Just looking at the way the way he moves the club, I think if we if we get something uh, in Vince's hands that, that feels uh, pretty pretty good and, and he can time it nicely, I mean, yeah, um, got a good goal swing, like I say. So his transition is I wouldn't call it um, quick, but it's mm -hmm. probably fairly aggressive, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Um, a little bit more head weight is probably beneficial for his timing. Definitely. And a light head weight is probably causing him, as he says, like inconsistency is an yeah. issue for him. It's not, I think it's not just that he's hooking the ball. He's also just struggling with the driver off the tee as just a problem club. Saw that. Yeah, yeah, so saw that. it reminds me of myself when I first mm -hmm. came in to see you is I had such a, a light swing weight head. Yeah, yeah. And yes, I had flaws in my swing as we all do, but I think the light head weight was such a um, uh, sort of detractor mm -hmm. from my consistency. He's got to be seeing that being a bit of a lighter head with the Rogue, having a lighter swing yeah. weight is just kind of <clears> causing <throat> that, that sort of club head feel to really yeah. disappear for him. I mean, something that Vince could, could very well try if, if he, he wanted to, um, or Vince, if you're watching, if you wanted to. I'm sure he's going to be um, <laughs> you, you could also hot melt the, the, okay. the current head. Add I mean, some you weight could, to you this. Could, you could, uh, especially into the toe. Yep. Um, you've got about Out 14 here. grams in which you can allocate into the, the toe to get that head weight up to about 200 grams, okay. uh, which I'd really like to see it get somewhere around there. So, right. yeah, I mean, Vince could very well um, get some more... Um, sort of performance out of his own setup by hot melting it. So if you didn't want to go into the process of mm -hmm. looking for a new driver, there's yep. a hot melt port on this head somewhere. Uh, so you can, if you just take that that back weight out. Okay. So, so you, you would go to a club builder that does that process yep. and say, I want 14 grams weighted towards the toe. So basically inject 14 grams of hot melt in there. So as you do, it, you're kind of weighting the head, weight the head, weight the head until you get it right. <coughs> the hot melt is is quite literally that hot enough that as it's in kind of its goo form. Literally just hold the head there. Oh, and it so, stays there. Yeah, so the, the trick is obviously just to hold the head so you can actually feel through the frame where the hot melt is Based on the temperature. Sitting. Yeah. Oh, really? So, yeah, you, you know, if you want to go, okay, I feel it there, I want it a little bit more there. So you can, you can tilt the head based on where you want it to, to kind of ultimately uh, lo relocate itself. That's interesting. Once, uh, once it's kind of been in there for a few minutes, it will cool down in temperature enough till it, it actually can will get take a solid mm, form yeah. again, and then that's it stuck. Wow! Now you can sort of reheat it and stuff, but you're going to mark mark the paintwork and stuff like that. So it's probably well, want to get it right the first time. Yeah, I mean the um, it's actually got a little hot melt port as well. Actually, if you look at it, see through the hosel, yeah, through the, the oh, okay. hosel there, it's got a yeah. little a hole in there. So it's an option, right? Yeah, some some people if if one you know if you have to try and extract hot melt, so it's a it's nightmare a a job. Nightmare. Get literally get a, a coat hanger, some kind of wire, uh, sort of in there, and you literally have to, you know, disrupt it by by really? literally just kind of scraping out the frame of the head. But there's so many welds and different things inside these heads, they'll they'll probably find a little corner, and it'll be very hard to get it all out. So that's that's a way of, I guess. I think Vince mentioned that he was fit for that driver. I don't know that he's bought it yet. So let's say he hasn't bought okay. it. Okay. If he, if he had bought it, that's an option. I and mean, there's going to be tons of people that will be in the same situation. Mm -hmm. I think that's not a bad idea. But yeah. if you hadn't bought it, this head is probably still not great because no. the face angle is more closed than something like yeah, LST. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Definitely. I would, I would just say, I would, you know, both ping heads would be, would be very high on my list of, of heads to try. Because he could get the 10 and a half and set it on open. Yeah. And it yeah. would have a nice open face angle. And there's plenty of mm -hmm. launch and spin out of this. Tons. CG tons and location. Tons. It's, it's okay to go down and launch. And, you know, like we've been talking about a lot, you know, we would be paying a lot of attention to strike point for, for Vince Very and true, making yeah. sure that we, we have him striking it in the right spot right. to produce enough launch and spin. We, right. we really know that that 10.5 is, it's only 10.5 there. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit more there and it's a little bit less there and we can influence spin based on where we, we can rotate around that head. So depending on, on what area we, we really focus on striking it, we can also influence spin, spin and launch from there. So 
from a fit perspective, that's that's some of the, the things that you want to consider when you're fitting. Yeah. Never go into a fit and, and leave not knowing where your strike pattern is with that oh, golf club. That would be a nightmare. It's a waste it? of time. Yeah, it is. There's too many variables. You think you know what's going on when the reality is on that particular day, if you don't strike it in that spot all the time, your, your launch numbers are completely compromised. Oh, we saw some craziness with my driver today. I had some high-ish strikes yep. spinning a thousand less than even just a thousand. barely low, lower than center strike. Definitely. Not a bad strike, like here versus there, yeah. thousand RPMs. Yeah, it can, can literally be eight millimeters, 10 millimeters apart, and, yeah. it, and it Huge just difference. makes a world, a world of difference. Yeah. Uh, so from a shaft perspective, yeah, this um, is interesting too. so graphite design, IZ springs to mind, like mm. to see you try, uh, try that. Um, you yeah. just happen to have one on your just massive selection here. <laughs> just looks right. like that. No excuses for us in terms of not having enough shafts. <laughs> Um, so so that's yeah. a, this, I have this in my three wood, so it's a nice kind of stable profile. Yeah, really, really uh, stable, um, pretty tip stiff. It's, mm. uh, Jordan Spieth plays this one in his his driver. He's a little bit quicker than Vince. I think he's at around 114, 115 driver okay. speed. Um, so a 6X. 6X. Yeah, tipped about three quarters of an inch should be about ideal for, for Vince in this scenario, especially as we're, we're, we don't mind firming up the tip section a little bit to uh, get a little control bit less face. control, yeah, a little less uh, rotation of the face. Very interesting. Um, that type of thing. Um, some other ones to maybe think of and consider. Um, I would go down the route of, I tell you what, the VA Drago would be a really good say, one that, as well. Yep, that's one we just reviewed. Yeah, very, very good against the the the, the hook. You know, against the, the I liked it quite a bit. The we less mess, it. yeah. I mean, very stable in the 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 tip section. Feels great, but but also performs very, very stable. So love to see uh, Vince kind of get his hands on one, one or both two. of those to, to try. And check out a ping uh, fitting cart with kind of the full options. I think yeah. the LST probably, when I started using that and I was hooking the ball, mm -hmm. that really made a huge difference to my confidence. Because mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything that sits quite More that open, open, is there? That's true. It's that true. would make such a big difference. But then again, I can take this driver and hit no hooks as well, just yeah. because it's so stable. So stable, isn't and it? Two really good options. I know. I know. No, I mean, the, the, it's great. the G400 will go down as, as a real, uh, real legendary well, line. Yeah. We, we just are getting glimpses right now of the new oh. driver for next year. I haven't um, seen it yet. Significantly different. Is it, yeah? Very different, mm -hmm. yep. Um, Looking forward to seeing that one. Yeah, I mean, talking to the ping engineers about it, you know, the, um, they're very happy to deliver something that is, is leaving what they've done in the past. So, so they're not worried about protecting their, their previous product line is what you're now, saying? No, in a sense they are because they tried, they were going to bring out a new Max version. Oh, they were. Oh yeah, you mentioned this. And they couldn't beat it. They couldn't beat so, it. So I mean, crazy, in I terms of, you know, if you want to sort of measure the integrity of a, a, a manufacturer, there, there a is good a point. good measuring stick of w where the pin guys are at. They, they didn't beat their uh, you know, previous models, so they don't bother trying to That's cool. you know, fool people by saying, here's the latest and greatest, go buy it when yeah. it's not better. So yeah. they're very confident um, <coughs> that the technology is different. It's something Ping have never done before. Really? Uh, yep, which is exciting stuff. So exciting stuff. Uh, look out for, for that in the next, uh, next sort of few weeks. Last question. Yes. I'm gonna ask this on Vince's behalf because okay. I'm, I'm sure he'll be wondering this. Rogue Sub-Zero mm -hmm. or M3 can both play quite a bit open. Why would you say those are probably not the best Just choice? Just got to spin too little. So way too low in spin compared yeah. to LST. I mean, you potentially could get M3 up and up in loft yep. with the weights up in that toe section. You could- At the back. Yeah, back and toe, uh, up in that Y track. You could get up in that toe enough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you would probably have to play you could probably play 12 degree, open up a little bit and turn it down into about 10.5 okay. loft. That's what I had to do to get that thing in the air yeah. myself. Yeah, I mean, it, it could work. It absolutely could, right? could work it. And it would be another one of the the, uh, the options. The just head, if he didn't, for like, sure. just if he didn't like the no, thing, for absolutely. example, if it wasn't suiting his eye or something like that. Yep. But as you said, the head weight is such a big advantage. Yeah. I think yep. if he goes Tail to TaylorMade, yeah. are they as heavy? TaylorMade is not going to be far away from the LS Tech oh, in really? the high okay. 190s. Um, and obviously the ability to add more weight through yep. the Y track as well, which oh, is yeah, nice. Right. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, as I say, you know, trust my gut instinct on that when I'm probably leaning towards the, you're the usually, two ping You're usually pretty right, so I would say it's a great recommendation. Not too bad. So yeah. um, grip size, grip, mm. um, you know, grip uh, size. From a pressure standpoint, like we always talk about, 
we, we know that we don't influence the rotation of the head in the same fashion traditionally that, that people we, say. That we think we do, yeah. But we, we can be very inconsistent with face rotation with different with the wrong size of grip. So yep. um, for, for Vince, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd like to see him pay attention a little bit to, to the, the grip size that he, he's playing and, right. and even texture. You know, even texture plays uh, plays a role. So make sure you get in, at least get some in your hands, make some swings, see what kind of gives you the most consistent. It makes a massive difference for me. Yeah. So if, if he's like anything like I am, the difference between a kind of a slippery yeah. grip and a mm -hmm. textured grip that's the right size Definitely. can be a lot of consistency left yeah. out there. I think that the biggest thing that that will, will take sort of that will help Vince will be will be keeping that face angle yep. closer to the path. Absolutely. So if, if you go, I mean, if we simulate, you know. <laughs> Sometimes difficult to do these things on, yeah. on, um, on the, the camera though. But uh, so if you have the, the target line, for example, sort of down the middle here. So target, target line. line. Yeah. This is path line. Here's the zone that you've got. The, the club face can mm. stay sort of somewhere roaming in this zone. Now for Vince right now, he actually does have. So this is if this is the target line and this is the, the, the path. Yeah. The, f the, the face gets too close to the target line. Okay. So he starts at one degree right of the target and yeah. it finishes about 30 yards left of target. So the head is traveling that way, Correct. but the face angle is pointed too much towards this side of the camera. We need to relocate that face angle much closer to the path, right. but it has to stay left of the path. Right. It has it to be, stay can't inside. can't be open to no. it or you're gonna Because then it's gonna be a push slice gotcha. unless we have a toe strike. Right. So we have to keep that face closer to the path, but mm. inside it. So that's going to be the key. Yeah, if I was working with Vince in here, that would be for me the first and foremost thing I would achieve would be I'd stabilize the ball flight through his face to path relationship. Mm -hmm. Then I would get to work on trying to optimize once I've made the, the flight very functional. Okay. First and foremost, I would, I would get it, I'd get it very playable. Then I'd get to work on making it, you know, longer and it. more consistent. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay, awesome. Well, hopefully Vince, this is going to be helpful for you. I think this is, a really good solution for someone with that set of ball flight. Hopefully, uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully be, should be really you know, there's, good. there's some kind of ideas there, Vincent, in terms of the direction you can go with it. Absolutely. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the little segment. We plan to do a ton of these, obviously, yeah. uh, about as often as we can, about a week, uh, weekly series, I should yep. say. Um, lots of Patreon members are already sent you data in, so we they may have, be featuring, yeah, well, some, featuring some ones that we've done in the last couple of weeks. For sure, we, we've had some really good uh, correspondence with uh, with the the Platinum and Diamond members, yep. <clears throat> and and kind of hopefully helping them steer them towards the buying decisions, and you know even things like you know knowing where to go to to you know get some of the best advice. If, you know, that's true. Most people can't come up to Toronto and, and see us. We've been so fortunate that so many of you have, but yeah. you know the real reality of life is that that's not going to be in anywhere near the majority of you. So no. we want to be able to guide you at least to get the the right advice or even get good advice. Um, and and obviously you know if if you don't have access to any of this stuff, what do you need to do? I mean, you, you, you might have to put it together yourself. You might have to make, make yeah. online purchases. Um, so at least we can do our little bit in, in you know, the, the channel to help you with that. That's an educated decision versus a guess, right? Definitely. That's pretty much Definitely. the difference. Yeah, understand some of the variables that you're working with. And yeah. you know, I'd love to hear from someone um, you know, watching right now who has, who has no access anywhere near them to a fitting store okay. and always has to do this stuff um, yeah. you know, off, off their, their sort of um, you know, their own knowledge and, and understanding. And dig out of the dirt, so to speak, 100%, right? yeah. 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 Well, I think the, the more that we sort of talk about what's required in terms of knowledge yeah. to, to give someone at least some direction, yeah. um, I think it'll be a little bit more accessible for mm -hmm. people to say, okay, well, I do have a local shop. Maybe it's not the best launch yeah. monitor, but I can get some numbers to sort of um, get a general idea of what mm -hmm. my ball is doing Definitely. and make some recommendations. Definitely. All right, awesome. Good, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, this is, this is obviously geared <coughs> you know, to help everyone, but you know, specifically the Patreon members and, and kind of getting them, but we want all of you guys to, to kind of see the value in this, Absolutely. hopefully. And that's why we're doing it, is, that's to, what it is. is to give you examples community. of how it works. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, so hopefully there's, there's a little bit in there for, for everyone, some of the ways in which you can navigate too much curvature and, you know. Things like that. Yeah, things so like Real that. world, we just wanted to focus on some more real world, I guess, recommendations. Definitely. Kind of getting a little bit more in your head in terms of how you do fits and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yeah. let us know if you enjoyed it and we're, we're certainly planning on doing a whole lot more of these. Definitely. All right. Good. Excellent. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.